Mile High, Prescott, Arizona, just 90 minutes north of Phoenix, is a community relatively small in size, but very big on arts and culture. Dedication to the arts is seen year after year through the many museums and galleries to local theater groups and public art. Residents and visitors can experience arts and culture through the numerous signature annual events that Prescott hosts. Deep historic and cultural roots, including ranching, mining, Old West cowboys, and Native American tribal life, continually make their way into the town's museums and artworks. Prescott's own Elks Opera House, a downtown gym that was restored to its original 1905 grandeur, offers its own exciting entertainment, including musical performances, theater, and performing arts. Local art advocates work hard to keep arts and culture alive here in Prescott. My name is Cindy Gresser, and I am the president of Prescott Area Arts and Humanities Council. Prescott Area Arts and Humanities Council was formed in 1974 to support and advocate for the arts in the city of Prescott. We accomplished this by having a seat on the Tourism Advisory Committee as well as dispersing grant funds for the city of Prescott. Art enriches our community and our everyday life. We see it everywhere that we go. We experience it in almost everything that we do. Walk around the Courthouse Plaza in Prescott and you will see a prolific amount of public art on our square. You will also find wonderful, wonderful galleries such as Tiz that we're standing in now that offer varied and wonderful forms of art. It enriches our community, it brings tourists, it brings people to our community that want to live and have a better quality of life. Prescott enjoys a great variety of arts events throughout the year. Fourth Friday Art Walk is held throughout the year. Uh, we also have Chalk It Up, a wonderful street art festival the Fippin Memorial Day show, which features wonderful CA artists from all over the country, the Smoke Eye Museum, Southwest Indian Arts Festival, Charlotte Hall's Prescott Indian Art Market, open studio tours. Uh, we are rich in the number of artists within our community and the many, many, many different festivals and events that we have ongoing throughout the year in Prescott. Hello and welcome to Mountain Artist Guild and Gallery. I'm Vivian Farmer and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about our guild, the gallery, and arts in our community. It's a beautiful place for members and non-members alike to show their artwork. And we have various pieces from watercolor and oil, jewelry, ceramics, just about every medium you can think of. We are one of the oldest guilds in Arizona, over 63 years old. We have a place to learn here with workshops and a place to create and network with other artists. And we also have a place to show and sell their work in the gallery. Mountain Artist Guild does two courthouse art festivals every year. We also co-sponsor the wonderful studio tour that happens every fall. Arts are so important in our community. They support self-expression, not only for adults, but for young people. And it also enriches and helps educate our community. I'm John Langelier, the director of Charlotte Hall Museum. We're on this magnificent three and a half acre campus founded over 80 years ago by the extraordinary woman whose name we now hold as our our namesake of this institution. These three and a half acres uh, were her lifelong desire to share the way people lived, everyday people, not the famous, not the rich, so to speak, but the everyday person who came to Prescott over 150 years ago as trappers, as soldiers, as miners, a great array of individuals, and of course, a real, real deep and abiding interest in the women who did so much to create the community that we know of as Yavapai County today. So as you'll come to this magnificent campus, which is part Arboretum, part Living History Farm, part traditional museum, you'll see the, not only the governor's mansion, but the home of John Charles Vermont, the territorial governor in the 1870s of Arizona, the great pathfinder who had made his niche and name in the pre-Civil War era. We have traditional exhibits in the Lawler Center and in the Charlotte Hall Building built during the 1930s during the era of the Depression that tell you about life as it was 
in the time of the territory through early statehood. You have to come here to experience the Arizona history adventure. I'm Kim Villapando, the executive director here at the FIPPIN. Um, and just want to give you a little brief uh, history of the Fippin Museum. The namesake is George Fippin. He was a painter and sculptor of themes of the American West. Back in 1974, a group of artists, art patrons, and family members got together and wanted to create a center for American art. So in uh, 1984, the museum did open its doors. Uh, this year has been very exciting for us as we've made a major expansion to the Fippin. Uh, we've added 10,000 square feet, so that gives us about a total of 13,000 square feet of gallery space now. Uh, the lower level is still just a shell and uh, future plans include having a new library, uh, multi-purpose classroom, as well as additional gallery space down there. My name is Cindy Gresser and I am the executive director of the Smokai Museum. Smokai Museum was built in 1935 with funds provided from the CCC and the WPA projects as initiated by Grace Sparks. The museum hosts a, a beautiful atmosphere that resembles a Hopi Pueblo structure built of native rock and stone as well as timbers cut from the Prescott National Forest. It has a very unique sense when you walk into the building. Many native people feel like they come home when they come into the building. The museum houses an amazing collection of Indian art and artifacts. We also have a wonderful collection of baskets, Yavapai, Western Apache, Hopi, Pima, Papago. Uh, we have lithics, which are stone tools um, that teach you about how ancient people lived and what they ate, where they went, how they traveled. We also have a very large display of Hopi Kachinas. Each one tells a unique and beautiful story. And uh, Kachina dolls, or Tithu, are given to Hopi children as they come of age, uh, starting when they're very young. There is a lot of culture contained within about 5,000 square feet in this museum. I'm John Meyer. I'm the executive director here at Prescott Center for the Arts, and we are the Prescott area's oldest, largest, and most successful community theater. We're now in our 42nd continuous season. We are housed here in the old Sacred Heart Catholic Church, which was donated to the group when they first started in about 1968. And we have a lot of programs that promote the arts. We have our main stage series. Uh, we have musicals, comedies, dramas. We have family theater productions, which uh, feature youth actors, young actors. We have a PCA Presents program where we bring uh, already packaged programming to, the, uh, to our, our patrons. Uh, we have a Reader's Theater program as well, which now is going out to Prescott Valley Library, and we hope in the future we'll go out further as well. The arts are a major, major component to any city's promotion of tourism, and we are busy about 40 weeks out of the year. So if we have tourists here, uh, whether they're not necessarily coming for the arts, certainly in the evening when most of the other activities they come for are not happening, they can come here, see a great show at an affordable price and get really a picture of Prescott as a whole. We are not just hiking trails or lakes or mountains or, or what it might be. We are a whole community and certainly the arts are a big part of that. Residents and visitors can enjoy the arts year-round throughout Prescott. For more information on arts and culture, go to visit-prescott.com.